do want to sneeze, but I can't. Okay, so this is the license. This is a license center where you basically get your skills up. In the early Grand Tourismans, it was the first thing you did. It was to go to the license center to get your licenses to then be able to race. An interesting fact about this is that all the license uh, coaches are current or former Grand Tourism World Series drivers. So in this case, he's North American. And I can't remember exactly which one he's done, but he's done one of them. All right, so here you go. These are all your licenses. The final exam, you can only take once you've completed B1 through to B9. So we won't be able to test, so we won't be able to do that just yet. So let's jump straight into B1. This is a high speed ring, which is a Gran Turismo Classic. Also, this test is a Gran Turismo Classic. Because the first iteration of the Demio and starting and stopping, this is the very first license test that you will under, well, newcomers will undertake. Because this is where you learn your basics. So you're starting and stopping is your first one. The simple premise of this is that you are going to be, you accelerate from a standing start and you've got to stop inside the goal area. If you stop in the goal area after time expired or you overshoot the goal, the goal area, you fail it. And you've got to, you just got to start, you've got to go straight and then you've got to stop in the stopping area before time runs out. Let's just check my settings. Yeah, everything's off. You can change the settings on traction control when you're out there, so. Turn on traction control will help with the lift. So, Break about here. Easy. So that was just before the 50 meter board, and it's the first time gold. So as uh, you go from the standing start. So as you accelerate through the gears, you go up to third. And where you want to be braking is just as you get to those cones. And you see I stopped perfectly within. You can brake a bit earlier, which will help stopping distance, but you also gotta make sure if you do that, you've got to make sure that all four wheels are in the goal area for it to count. So that's done. We can go to the cafe and say we've completed that. Which we're going to do now, and then we're going to go back to this, and then do some more. So let's go back to the cafe, as it said we need to just do B, the license B1, and then come back. Let's go to B2. Now B2 is similar, is the same as, well it's not the same, it's similar to B1, except we've got a more powerful car, which means you're going to go faster, which will alter where you need to brake. Remember, you've got to get all four wheels in and stopped before time expires, and you can't overshoot. I remember the very first time I tried the Grand Turismo test, I didn't brake, and I just overshot the brake. I overshot the goal zone by quite a margin because I didn't realise it was starting and stopping. I was in a friend's house who also had the game before I did, and I tried it then. I was like, "Whoops." So as he said, you just need to hit the brakes a bit earlier, and that's it. 
Right. This is four wheel drive. It's So we're going down the straight again. Just need a bit of break a bit earlier than before, so say by here. And there we go. Easy. So starting from the rear. Bit of traction control. Gets you underway. So I did the same as what I did last time. We braked where the cones were. And I'm in the goal zone. There you go. Job done. B3 is next up. Master the Art of Corner. We're in a very slow car, so driving technique is tested here. So the car is slow. It's also got not very much grip. So your driving technique is going to be crucial. So once it loads up, I'll show you. It's a, a show. Yeah, your steering skills on a right-hander is what is going to be tested here. And we're in a cap. We're in a Copen. 62 brake, 62 brake horsepower, 830 kilograms, light car, and front wheel drive, which makes it all the more popular because front wheel drive, everything's power, steering, braking, everything is going through the front. Here's a Yes, chill. <laughs> yeah, it's a gold. I know I could do that. Di I could do that bit better, but you just need to do what I just did. It's all about smooth inputs, and you should. All you need to do is just smooth it around the corner, get the line, keep the power in, you get yourself a gold, just like you did there. B4 is different. More power in the car. Still the same configuration. Still the same corner. Same same configuration, i.e. front wheel, front wheel drive. Front engine, front wheel drive. But you got more power. GP... It's not a GP2 engine there, James. It's an Audi. Of course. Thank you the same as before, just done in a faster car. This time round, you will not be able to take this flat. Let's try that again. Don't particularly want to be touching the grass. There we go, that's how you do it. Because I turned in, because I turned in a bit later and I got it tighter when the second gear, I was able to get it this time round. So the third one, we're going to Sakuba, which is a Japanese test track, which used to be used for touring car racing and still used on the other occasion for motorcycle racing. But basically, it's from eyes is testing. You wouldn't be able to get F1 tracks on that track. Let's let's just put it like that. You know, Japan has all Japanese manufacturers have test tracks. So you got your you're starting off at a hairpin, and then you're going your right, and then your left, all the way to the end of the hairpin. So, we're not allowed to climb with a wall, nor are we allowed to go off track. Let's go. Technique again is of the essence. Let's go. 
put it up to third briefly. Smooth in. Make sure you get the curb. And then again. Oh, you don't want to touch the grass so and keep it tight. There you are. So you just need to be smooth with the steering. If you're going too aggressive, like you're just throwing it in, you're gonna wash out. You will do that, which is understeer. When the front's a given. When the front's run out of grip, you will understeer. And you don't want to do that on a front wheel drive car. As said in the previous test, your acceleration, your steering, and your braking on a front wheel drive car is always on the front. It's a different technique required in comparison to your rear wheel drive equivalents. Speaking of which, this is our rear wheel drive equivalent. Same circuit, well, same circuit, same corners, when a front engine rear wheel drive car with more power. So when we load, wait for this to load up, same objective as before. We're not allowed to touch the wall or go off a track. Let's go. You don't want traction control of either. You don't want traction control on either. So small dab of brake, bit of correction, and that's off. <laughs> Throw that in the bin. Let's go again. Okay, so I didn't get that right as I turned in too early. Let the car do the rear. Spin it out. Make sure it doesn't run out. The gold. I didn't drive that. I didn't drive that well. Meaning that the tr meaning that the times are a little bit lenient on this one. I felt the time was lenient. It should really be a 10.5 to get a gold, not a 10.7. Either way, throttle control and steering inputs are what key. Our fifth corner in basics takes you to Trial Mountain, which is a classic Gran Turismo track, making its return after being absent in sport. It's had a bit of a facelift and a bit of a track lift because, well, 16 drivers instead of 6, meaning that the old star gantry was a little too small. It did move in the flow of the track a bit, though, which is a shame, especially in the last section. But, uh, yeah, be like that sometimes. I'll also hear on the licenses you will be needing it later on on one of the menu tests. So what we're doing here is the bottom hairpin on the very western side of the circuit. It's after the big long straight. And I'm driving a Group GR86, which is also a front engine rear wheel drive. Similar weight, similar power. So it's all going to be about technique, about how you control the rear. Let's jump into it. That is completely lenient, I gotta admit. Because I made so many errors in there, and I still got a gold. Let's do this properly. Turn off the ghost because it just causes a few issues. So what we're doing here, we throw down a fifth. Look for a kangaroo sign right there. Make it smooth. Drift it round the corner. If you feel like it's drifting up, make sure you get a bit of a wally on to get it all the way around. And there you go. That's how you do it. This is not for absolute best. This is just to make sure you get the gold. And then you can make your way through and say, I got all the golds on these licenses. I can show that to my friends. Yeah, exactly. Show you how you do it properly. Cornering basics again. We're back here. This is on Mount Panorama, the famous Australian circuit, otherwise known as Bathurst. The Bathurst 1000, the 12 hours are held here, and for two years, Super Touring had the own 1000 um, race as well. A lot of national pride are because of the V8 supercars. They didn't take the Super Touring to heart. That's Aussie for you. They much prefer the bigger, louder, heavier VA power instead of the. It was either straight forwards or four, uh, four cylinder straight forwards, V5, V6, whichever one it was. That's what the engine. 
Now we need to find a visual reference. We're in the Evo Mark Evo 4. Lancer Evo 4. Same car as Tommy Macklin won his first WRC title in 96. I think we've won it in 97, 98 and 99. Four times. Let's jump. Now I actually broke a bit too early as well for good measure. So let's try again. Look for our landmark. We are looking for a lamppost just before the 50. Didn't feel great, but it's still a gold. So, number nine, this, I don't remember the look at this track. That looks like Dragon Trail Seaside, one of the fictional tracks of the game. It's a Grand Turismo Sport Classic, and it's based in Croatia in its fictional term. There are two Dragon Trail tracks. There's this one, and then next door to it is Gardens. It's literally next door to it. So you see, the grandstand on your left, just beyond that, is where the garden one is. You can't really see it because of the backgrounds, but you get where, where you get what I'm talking about. What we're doing is the double right-hander at the north end of the circuit. In a Honda series, so front wheel drive, everything, remember what we said earlier about the earlier tests? Everything on the front, just beware of that. And also with license tests, you can't change brake bias. Let's move on the wheel. You see what I mean when I was putting too much power in on the front? Still enough for a gold. You can get away with going over four wheels over the curb to get that. But as I said earlier, be careful about your acceleration of flooring it with too much too much power in the front as it washed out, just like it did then. But a gold's a gold. We go on to B10, which is the graduation. And if you pass that one, as Danny is so explaining, we get your license B. So this is the middle part of Secuba. And we're driving a Renault Clio, which is more front engine, front wheel drive stuff. <sighs> right. So final exam time. Getting through this section under 25 seconds will get you gold. To pass, you need to get under 27.4. So the first section you've not dealt with before, the second part you have in earlier tests, so your B5 and B6, you've already dealt with this. But the first section, you haven't. So you're gonna go through it blind. Right, let's go. Come for soft. Into third. Fourth, make sure you don't get too kind of tight. Break just before breaking just before for the slip road. To keep it smooth on the to keep it smooth on the way in. And then keep it tight all the way through across the line. There's your gold. Alright, the National B license has been acquired. And you, starting from Gran Turismo 4, you got cars when you got it under over a certain amount, say like your bronzes or your silvers or your gold. Because I got all bronze, I get the Clio, which was the last car we used earlier. 
because we receive our national B license, we get a Clio, the car we just drove, and because we've got our all golds on this test, we get an additional car. The Gigio Twin Turbo. With all Grand Turismo games, you get a car. You get a car prize for whenever you gold all licenses and a point. So you're like B in this case. International A, which is a little bit later on. And those are extremely useful. So it's always worth going for gold early on in the game. And that would set you off on the best possible foot. First time I ever gold or golded a license was the rally license in Grand Theft Auto 3, and then I proceeded to immediately sell it. Yeah, well done, JJ. Cookie Lopez, Spanish, from what I remember, and also a current uh, GCWS driver. That will be that will be on the next one about the autobrake. No, I haven't. Try to learn to drive about it. Basically, auto brake. So that's National A. But we've got a few things we need to do. It's basically that. We've got a few things which we need to clear up before we get on to that point. So let's get on to it. Alright, so let's get on to it. 